All right. Hey, good evening, guys. Thanks for stopping on by. This is the part where I awkwardly talk till everybody's quiet. Um, hey, seriously, thank you so much for coming uh, back this week. This is your first time with us. Hey, Aubrey. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, if this is your first time with us, thank you for hanging out with us tonight. We got off to a fantastic start last week. I mean, we were bringing chairs in left and right. So thank you for, for taking this seriously and for wanting to be a part of this. Um, so just to kind of catch everybody up, last week we talked a little bit about how we as a church family are really diving into the idea of being the primary providers of pastoral care, which we'll talk about in a second, for those in our circle of influence. And, and so kind of our two goals that we wanted to do over uh, last week and, and tonight was, one, help you see yourself as that person, and two, we want to make sure that we are empowering you and equipping you to do just that. We don't want to ask you to do things and to go out on faith and then not give you the tools to do it. So that was something that we wanted to make sure that we did. So. That was good. That almost felt like the previously on an episode of like some show, you know, previously on how to be a good leader. And then, good job. That's nice. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Okay, go ahead. You done? I think so. Go ahead. So, um, pastoral care. The way that we defined pastoral care this past week was leading someone to take their next step emotionally and spiritually. And so last week we, we talked about the emotional side. Uh, tonight, we're obviously going to be talking about the spiritual side of that. The reason those two are, are together is because they play off each other. Um, the example we used last week was um, a bucket you know, with, with varying heights on different sides, a, a slap bucket, I think it's called. And you can only fill that bucket up to the height of the lowest slat. And so someone who is not ready emotionally to take their next step, no matter how much they know about the Bible, um, they're not going to be able to, to do that. And someone who is not ready spiritually, no matter how great they are at handling stress, no matter how great they are about processing things that happen in life, if they don't know what to do next spiritually, then they're not going to be able to take that next step. Um, first of all, we got a ton of fantastic feedback last week, um, things that we can do better, things that we can explain better. And so, first of all, thank you so much for everybody who, who did give feedback. I know something that, that we talked a little bit about last week that we wanted to dive into just a little bit more this week was this idea of well, why is this so important? You know, the idea that God continues to send us, Clear Creek Church of Christ, people is, is a huge, huge blessing because, like we said, he can send them anywhere, right? He could send them to any church down the street. And we know there are some fantastic churches in our city. But he is continuing to send people to us. And so one of the biggest reasons we want to make sure that everyone feels equipped and confident to help other people take their next step is because we want to be good stewards of that gift, the gift of people. We want to make sure that we're taking care of them. Um, and, and the piece of feedback that I got last week was, Evan, I loved what you were saying about that, but... Maybe you need to be a little bit more black and white. And I was like, okay, well, what do you mean? And, and they said, well, the reality is, if we don't, those people will be lost. If we don't, then those people will fall through the cracks. And so I was thinking, okay, well, how can I say that in a much nicer way? Um, and I thought about how to do that. And I was like, well, let's find some great Bible story. And so I thought about the parable of the talents, right? And so I love the parable of the talents. And the part of the parable of the talents I love the most is when God trusts you with something, a blessing, something that he thinks is valuable, and you do well with it, he continues to bless you, right? He continues to reward you until I remembered the last part of the parable of the talents with the guy who God blessed him with something, God trusted him with something, and he buried it in the ground, which we should not do with people that come here, P.S., <laughs> um, just to get that out of the way. But the reality is there, right? We have this incredible responsibility, and it, it's a blessing, right? We should feel so amazing that God, the creator of the universe, is trusting us as a church family to take care of his creation. And so that's, that's why we think this is so important. Um, and it's, it's something that we are super passionate about. And again, it is our responsibility as people who are lucky enough to get paid to work here 
to make sure that everyone feels confident to be able to do that. So, the idea is we want to make sure that you guys feel confident in being the primary providers of pastoral care, which is helping people take steps emotionally and spiritually for those in your circle of influence. Um, hopefully you guys were here this past Sunday because Josh did an amazing job talking about this idea of circles and how they're greater than rows. And, and you know, everyone has a circle. In fact, it, Sunday is finding your circle, right? Mm -hmm. The importance yeah. of making sure that you have your circle and that you identify it and that you know what that looks like. And it's going to be amazing. We're excited. So I would love to start us off in prayer tonight. And then we are going to jump in about how to help people take their next step spiritually. Father God, we love you. We thank you so much. Um, we are so, so blessed. And, and honestly, God, we're honored. We're honored that you trust us with one of your most prized possessions, and that's your creation. And Father, you, you continue to send us people. You continue to uh, bless us with people walking through the door. And, and we want to feel the burden and the responsibility of taking care of the things that you give us. God, just as we want to be good stewards with our time and good stewards with our money, we also need to make sure that we're being intentional about being good stewards with the people that you help walk through this door. And so that's, that's what we want to focus on tonight. We want to get down really practical and get down to the nuts and bolts of how we can help people take that next step, uh, especially spiritually, as we try to help them become more like you. Father God, you're amazing, and we love you. And it's your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, let's get started here. You've got three different sort of headers on your sheet. By the way, does everyone, uh, if you do not have a handout, raise your hand and we'll get one to you. We don't want anyone to uh, miss out. Let's see. This is a blank one, though. Oh, they're in the back, sorry. Oh, okay. So if you do not have one, just raise your hand. We will get one to you. We want to make sure everyone's able to follow along. While those are being passed out, here's the first section. And we're going to kind of make this real, real simple. When you think about spiritual leadership, there are three statements or questions, and here's the very first one. You as a leader, by the way, uh, everyone in this room is a leader because you are ahead of someone else in a realm of life. By virtue, if you are a parent, you are a leader of your family because you are ahead of your children. If you are a manager, by definition, you are a leader of those under your care. And so whatever your role, the things we talk about tonight I think will be helpful. So the first one is this. When you talk about pastoral care, leading someone to take their next step, specifically spiritually, you need to show them the first thing, which is where. Show them where. So what does that mean? Let's just chat about this for a quick second here. Uh, when we think about how to get somewhere, uh, well, let's do it this way before I give this. Uh, someone help me out. Someone give us your, your home address. Do you trust this group with your home address? Uh, uh, what do you got? Okay, 6614 Harrison Heights Drive. Now, if I were to ask you, uh, how do you get home? Could you give me some pretty quick directions on doing that? So you'd say, ask Siri. You'd say, ask Siri. <laughs> By the way, Siri is the new wife. All the men know what that means, right? It used to be, hey, sweetheart, now it's, hey, Siri. So it works out great. I think one of the questions we would have to answer, though, when you say, can you give me directions, is the first question where are you right now? Well, I mean, for heaven's sakes, if you were to say, I want to give you directions to my house, but you're starting in California, I'm going to give you radically different directions than if you're starting here at the Clear Creek Church of Christ. And this is obvious, right? So before you can help someone take their next step, you first have to identify where they are to begin with. This is obvious, but I, I don't want to miss the obvious. So we have a great tool for you. Most of you have heard of this. Many of you have used it, but it is... Simply this, it is called the Stage Locator. And it should be on screen, but if not, let me tell you how to get there, okay? A uh, real simple way to do this, and you may want to jot this down, go to Clear Creek, hang on, oh, there we go, clearcreekcoc.org. And in the header, you'll notice a resource tab. There's a little drop-down menu, and it says Discipleship Path. Survey. How many of you have already taken this discipleship path survey? Okay, so this is going to be your where. And Evan, why don't you walk us through what to do next? Because once you know where you are, the next question is? Yeah, sure. Um, so once you know your where, 
obviously the next thing that you want to do is you got to figure out your what. Um, and so everybody should have a Path of a Disciple book. That's the little blue book. Not the Kelly blue book. That was a bad joke. Um, it's a little disciple book. Everybody have one? Hold it up. You got it? You got it? Okay, so the idea here is after you go to the survey, it kind of tells you your where. If you will look on, I believe it's page three or so of the book. Before you do this, yeah. I, I should have said this. And then, you know, one of the things, a leader takes people to where they've already been. And we'll talk more about that here in a moment. But the, the fact is, it's hard to ask others to find out where they are spiritually, whether it's taking the survey or anything else, unless you've already done it yourself. There's two reasons for that. One, it's harder to direct people if you don't know what it is you're directing them to. So going through the survey yourself, you will be more familiar with the tool and in better position to help others. The second thing, though, is this thing we call moral authority, meaning uh, how many of you remember growing up where your parents would say, don't do what I do, do what I say? Any of you ever have a you know, moment like that? Now, because they were your parent, you did what they said for fear of death. But there is a moral authority when someone says, here's what I'm telling you to do, but let me say I've already done it as well. And so that's why it's important for you to be not only familiar, but also to walk through it. Yep. So page seven and eight. I was close. Look at page seven and eight of that book, all right? I was buying you some time for that. I appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so what you're going to do after you take your stage locator survey, it will shoot you back an email, and it will let you know where in one of these stages you are. Um, if you'll click for it a couple of times, uh, Josh was so gracious to take one of these for us. And so like, this is the email that you would get right here. Um, it says, thank you for taking the path stage locator. Uh, and it goes through and it, and it talks about all these different um, stages. And so, yes, it's a bad yes. score, Josh. A negative, how do you get negative on these? Uh, it looks like my math score in high school. This was, this is, revenge for the the picture on sunday oh just um, wait till this sunday i know <clears throat> just wait hey this so sunday. so click forward uh a couple slides there derek so seriously you'll get an email that says this um and it'll go through and it literally tells you a score now let me first off say this is in no way perfect you know this is an approximation and this has nothing to do with your score with whether or not you're going to heaven all right just please, so let's let's just get that out of the way but what this does is it, it really does it gives you an idea of maybe where you are um and then so this person, uh, random person, this is his name, he got a 109, which means he is in the growing stage. Actually, usually 70% of people in your church are going to be in the growing stage. And so uh, what you would do is in your little book here, you would find, you would flip through, and there is a page dedicated to the growing stage. You guys flip through right now um, and see if you can find that page. Thank you, Ms. Nancy. So the growing stage is on page what? Did you guys find it? Perfect. So if you will look at the bottom right corner, it says recommended next steps. You pick one and you do it. I mean, it's, it's literally that simple. And I know that that's somewhat an oversimplification, but the idea is this. We need to know where we are before we can know what is next. But once we know where we are, we can grab one of these things, pick one, and do it. Now, there, there's something that I know I wanted to talk about. We talked a little bit last week about leadership and obstacles and, and how we as leaders want to make sure that we remove as many obstacles as we can uh, for other people. Knowing what to do next is very different than actually doing it, right? Um, Kyle Hedrick who a lot of you know goes here, he says this all the time and, and it cracks me up. He says, Evan, I'm, I'm not overweight because I don't know how to be skinny. Um, and, and, and there's some truth to that, right? I mean, everyone knows how you can be healthier, right? You eat better, you exercise more, you know, you stop eating Oreos and peanut butter at midnight, which is my vice. But we as leaders, we have this responsibility, right? We want to make sure that other people know what to do next but we also want to make sure that we are creating the path of least resistance. And so uh, most likely everyone in here has had someone in their life that has removed some type of obstacle for them that has helped them to take a step spiritually, right? In fact, I, I would love for you guys group up with just a couple people around you 
and, and think about that and, and discuss that. Think of somebody in your life who has done something for you, something simple or something huge that has removed some type of obstacle for you that has helped you take a step to be more like Jesus. So talk about that amongst yourselves for a second, and we would love to hear back. All right, guys, let's hear, uh, let's hear what you got. Who would like to share uh, something you guys discussed? Who, who has a great example of, of someone who removed an obstacle, big or small, that was going to help you take a step to be more like Jesus? I have another one. Yeah, man. So, I was Andy that, so Ricky Perry, mm-hmm. who Boogie knows very, he was Coach Perry to us. So he was our basketball coach, but also our uh, assistant principal. Mm-hmm. But he got us to in- integrate ourselves into chapter at school. So you got into public speaking, you got into getting in front of your peers and doing things that were out of the ordinary. That's awesome. But, which led to youth group and you know, all about that. Yeah, so absolutely. In terms of all that fun stuff. So I would say that he was instrumental for me to uh, be more of an advocate for those around me. Yeah, for sure. And now, you know, you've been able to give back to that with, you know, even here at Clickview. That's awesome. What else? Who else? Yes, ma'am. Um, Jake helped me by having me delegate responsibility within my ministry so that I didn't have to try to be Jesus, but I could be an effective part of body. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes helping you see where you can load off responsibility on other people. I mean, it just, it's the idea of multiplication is what we talk about a lot. That's fantastic. Let's get a couple more. What has somebody done for you that has helped you be more like Jesus? Does it have to be a person? Can it be an event? Absolutely. Uh, retirement from the NFL has allowed me to be at church more frequently. Mm. Yeah, and so, uh, I mean, raise your hand if your profession has ever been an obstacle for you to be more, yeah, I mean, everybody, even me and this is my job it's it's, seriously it's it's one of those things to where there are so many things you got something to say okay there i mean there are so many things that we can uh try to get out of our lives and you know be able to focus on being more like jesus this is a bad idea yeah being back on stage together um hey one more oh yes bonnie That's awesome. I know growing up, uh, Tommy Stone, who was one of the preachers over at Red Bank, uh, he was my youth minister growing up. And the thing that he did for me, there was a couple of us who were super close, a couple guys, and every Sunday night, he allowed us to come over to his house, and he kind of created this, this safe atmosphere for us to, to ask any question about the Bible that we wanted to, even like, you know, the the Church of Christ questions you don't ask about like women's roles and instruments, but he created a safe place for us to be able to go and, and ask those questions. And so it, it was really neat uh, for someone to do that for me. And so this idea that we as leaders, we need to do everything that we can to remove obstacles. So we take our survey, we find out roughly where we are, you kind of find your page in the book, and, and let's, let's drill down to the context really quick of, hey, of our small groups. Real quick question, though. I mean, I think some people might be thinking, okay, so wait a minute. You keep using the word obstacle, and we might kind of suss out internally what an obstacle is. But could we just give like a real quick sort of here's, here's a way to identify obstacles? Would that be okay real quick here? Go for it. Okay, good. I sort of asked in front of my friends, so I yes. thought that the peer pressure. That's like asking so, your mom in front of their friends if somebody can spend the night. Absolutely. Brilliant plan. Yeah. You know, so when we talk about obstacles, we all might be able to identify them if we see them, but that doesn't help you in preparing for the inevitable obstacles that you face or that other people face. So here's a way to identify someone's obstacles as well as someone else's growth. Three things, and it's the same three, for if they're growing or if they're facing an obstacle. The question is this. How are they using their time, talents, and treasures? If you look at those three things, you will identify areas where they are growing and or where perhaps they've hit a roadblock. If you begin to see, uh, for instance, we have some great friends. They are sports fanatics. That's what they do all the time, everywhere. When they're free, that's what they're doing. 
it has at or it at times began to eat into their ability to be engaged in a faith community to do some of the other things and so what that began to show as friends we could say hey we see in you that this may be a obstacle to your spiritual growth it's not a bad thing but the time commitment is impacting it so if you want to identify potential growth areas or obstacles look at the way someone's using their time talents and treasures and of course that begins with ourselves as well oh awesome um okay so under that section uh, that second section, that first fill in the blank, that's Path of a Disciple book. That's the thing that you guys hold in your hands. I want to get really specific just for a second and talk about the context of what we do here in our small groups. One of the most amazing ways that you guys can use this as a resource is to, within your small group, have everybody, and I would love for everybody to commit to do this over the next month or so, but to have everyone in your group take the survey find out where they are, go to their little page in their booklet, and just choose one next step. And then at one of your meetings, sit down, go around the room, and you're just going to do two things. Everyone is going to say what that next step is, and then everyone together is going to brainstorm how they can help that person take that step. I mean, and you know, how, how neat that would that be? Just if everyone all around the room, just chose one thing, one thing per person, and then everyone sat and brainstormed about what that would look like. I would, I would love to do uh, a, a little experiment here and just kind of get everybody on the same page, maybe what that would look like. Um, so let's say that for everyone in the room, which it probably could be, the next step that the person in your small group has said they want to do is they want to read their Bible once a day for 10 minutes. That's, so that's, that's their thing. I would love for you guys to take two minutes, again, turn to your neighbor, brainstorm ways that if you were in that small group with that person, they said, I want to try to read my Bible every day for 10 minutes. How would you help them to either remove obstacles or encourage them? How would you help them to accomplish that goal? Make sense? All right, guys, let's hear it. If you, if you were sitting around your small group and somebody said, hey, the thing that I would love to do more often is I want to read the Bible every day for 10 minutes, which I think is, is a pretty awesome, pretty awesome step. So how would you guys, being the professional small group people you are, how would you guys address that? How would you help them to accomplish that? Yes, sir. I think the first thing I would do is have them determine what time of day is best for them. Some people are early risers, some people are late risers, some people are late to go to bed whatever time in your life that's best for you, pick that time and then say, okay, what I will do is, I know I'm going further, further than you ask, is to take that and say, okay, I will, for 30 days, three weeks, get with you at that time. You can send your text, email, call your phone, whatever. You have to remind me to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I want you to have to move with that stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. Finding the time like when, when in your rhythm do you already have that time or could you make that time and then helping remind them, that's fantastic. What else, guys? Ginger? Okay, this is a, to build a habit. Mm -hmm. uh, there are 31 days in that month. There's mm -hmm. 31 chapters in Proverbs. So we can talk about that. I like that. It's easy to remember if you can remember to do it. Um, <clears throat> what else? How else might you help somebody? Mr. Bobby? One thing that works for me is I drive a lot and uh, just have some kind of media where you can listen, not necessarily reading, mm -hmm. but you can pay attention when it's, uh, read, it's read to you. To me, that's a great way to Absolutely. Uh, yeah, having that on audiobook, especially if you have a long commute in the morning or afternoon, it's fantastic. David? I think I, I, first I would affirm their desire to do that. That's true. Follow that yeah. up and ask, how can I help you? Hmm. How can I help you uh, just kind of get their permission mm -hmm. to be engaged with them in this journey? And maybe hopefully, you know, we have the relationship where I'm committing to something as well. And yeah. I'm ask them to help me mm -hmm. we can kind of be in this together. Absolutely. Shane, what would you got? I was going to say like daily devotionals. Mm -hmm. like daily devotional or devotionals for fathers right now be another tool to help them. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's like, you can sign up for email lists and they'll, every single day they'll email. That's fantastic. So, that is, just, that is a perfect, perfect 
example of, of what that would look like. And so you could do that for everybody in your group. They could go, they, they could say what their thing was, and then just by you guys brainstorming and then helping with that accountability side of it, you are helping to remove the obstacles and allowing them to figure out what's next. So there are two potential issues that typically come up uh, whenever we're talking through using this path book um, as a tool. Number one, for people who don't have a very strong church context, that would be really awkward to say, hey, will you go to my church's website and then click on the resources tab and then take this random, I mean, that would, you know, that, that would, could be kind of weird. Um, number two, we know um, there is no way everyone in your circle of influence is going to be at the same place, right? And so, yes, being able to go around and talk about what those next steps are, it's very helpful, and then you can brainstorm and you can help each other, but on an ongoing basis, you know that, okay, well, every time we get together, are we going to just, you know, is tonight going to be Shane's night that we focus on, and then, you know, tonight's Bruce's night that we focus on. You don't have to do it like that because there are some things... Um, there's a book, Move, that a lot of you guys are familiar with. Uh, our shepherds were able to talk about that a, a couple of months ago. But there are these things called spiritual catalyst. Um, spiritual catalyst, next steps, it's kind of all the same lingo, but here's the bottom line. There are some things that we can do with, as followers of Jesus that will give us a lot more bang for our buck, right? And so there are things we can do within our group every single week and whether that group is people who have been in church for a million years or people who are just realizing that some people think jesus is the son of god like seriously these are things that you can do that no matter where they're at it will help them to be more like jesus the first and, and probably the most important and we kind of hit on it a second ago is this idea of reflection on scripture reflection on scripture this is about raising your hand. What do you think the difference is between reading Scripture and reflecting on Scripture? What comes to your mind there? Spending more time. Mm -hmm. Spending more time. What else, Ken? Seeing myself in that Scripture. Seeing yourself in that Scripture. And I think that's, that's one of the best examples, one of the best definitions you can think of. When we say, when you hear us in our Clickery family say reflection on Scripture, it means internalizing to figure out what we can do externally, right? It's the idea of reading something with the intent to apply it. Not just reading for knowledge, not just reading to, to see what is going on in the story, but reading something with the end goal of trying to figure out how we can apply that to our lives. We could, Josh and I were joking today, we could talk for hours and hours and hours on reflecting on scripture and ways to do that and what that means and so on and so forth but because we don't want to be here for that long the easiest tool that we have and honestly one of the best tools i have found is the discovery bible study um, everybody should have a bookmark if you are sick of hearing about discovery bible study i'll pray for you um, and i will apologize because we are going to keep talking about it and, and it's for this reason the idea with Discovery Bible Study is that there's no way you can follow those questions without application being your end goal. Like there's no way that you can go through Discovery Bible and you can think about what the Scripture tells you about God and other people without going to question three, which is, what will I do with this? And question four is, who am I going to share this with? And so it is a simple tool. I uh, guess seriously, Discovery Bible Study is absolutely amazing. It has so many great things built out in it, but one of the most impressive and one of the most beneficial things that it does have built out, it's got that accountability and that application side built into it. I mean, think of how cool that would be, is if every single time we open the Word of God, when we first started reading, one of the first questions to the back of my mind is, okay, I need to look for something in this scripture that I personally am going to do. I need to look for something that I can apply to my life. I mean, that, that's a pretty cool filter. And, and I'll admit, I'm not always great at reading the Bible like that. Sometimes I'm reading to study for classes. Sometimes I'm reading because I think something's interesting. But how neat would it be if that was our filter? If every time we opened the Word of God, we were intentionally looking for a way to apply it to our lives. So that's, that's the first one, reflection on Scripture. 
The second one is serving. No matter where you find yourself, we talked about those stages earlier, no matter where you find yourself on the path, when you serve, especially when you serve together, it is going to absolutely help you be more like Jesus. Now, this is an and, well, and interesting church, thing. Well, I think one thing that's real important to reiterate is these three that he's going through right now uh, are not random ones that we have chosen and are now suggesting are particularly good for helping people take their next step. These are ones, I refer back to the book Move that Evan already did, but that book it's a survey of over a thousand churches, and what they found is that spiritual growth can, to some degree, be measured insofar as what causes people to grow more like Jesus. And these, if you don't do any three other things in your small group ever, if you do these three, these are three of the ones that no matter where someone is, it will help them grow and be more like Jesus. That's why he's focusing on these so much. So I don't want you to hear these and go, yeah, yeah, I hear it. No. This is a disciple-making practice that will radically change your group or your circle of influence. Is that fair enough? Okay, absolutely. No. And so, focused on Scripture, we talked about that, serving again. Now, this is something that happens inside and outside of the church. You know, something that I love that, that our elders really wanted us to focus on over the past years is that, you know, finding these service opportunities that aren't just humanitarian in nature, right? These opportunities where we can go in and actually form relationship, where it's ongoing, where we can spend time with these people, we can learn about their lives, we can learn about their families. And so, yes, not all service opportunities are created equal, but the idea of serving, regardless of where you are, is definitely going to help you be more like Jesus. And so we have reflection on Scripture, we have serving, and then the third one is spiritual friendships. Spiritual friendships. Spiritual friendships are definitely different than just regular friendships. Um, you probably have people in, in mind that are coming uh, that you know is in each category. You don't have to name them out loud. Um, but the idea of having a spiritual friendship is that it is a peer-to-peer -peer relationship where you are intentionally helping one another become more like Jesus. It's not just a place where you hang out. It's not just a group of friends where you, you share common goals. But the root of your friendship is to help one another become more like Jesus. Hey, Evan, what's the difference between, he said as though randomly, hey, Evan, what is the difference between a spiritual friend and another word we use often, which is a spiritual mentor? I'm glad you asked. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> um, but no, it, it's a great question. So again, when you think about friendships, spiritual friendships, it, it's a lot more of that peer-to-peer. -peer. You know, there are, are things that, you know, Josh and I can definitely help each other on in our walk to become more like Jesus. And there are things that I will probably be able to help him more, like, help him more with, and there are definitely things that I know that he is more mature in, in his different areas of his life that he can help me with. And so it's, it's kind of this give and take back and forth. Whereas when we think about spiritual mentors, I, I think a mentor is definitely kind of that one step up. Uh, the mentor is definitely more in a position to give, whereas the mentee is, is in more of a position to, to receive. And so they are typically someone, and I would encourage everyone to try to find this person in their life, but they are typically someone who is a few steps ahead of you that can talk to you, they can teach you, you know, what mistakes they made and where they are in their life. Um, and, and they are helping you to move on. Does that make sense? Is that a pretty good distinction? So maybe a simple way to think of this is spiritual friends walk together. A spiritual mentor leads the way. And that gives you maybe a picture for what kind of friendships do you have between both of those kind of relationships. Perfect. Um, and so, again, like Josh was saying, these three things, if, if we don't improve on anything else, if we can do these three things better, and that, that's something that I, I personally am trying to commit to do, this idea of making sure that I'm reflecting on Scripture, this idea that I am serving in some way, and that I have people in my life who I am helping me like Jesus, and they are helping me be more like Jesus. It doesn't matter where you are on your walk. Again, whether you've known Jesus for one second or a million years, these three things will absolutely help you 
to become more like him. So, where you are, stage locator survey, what to do next, we have our booklet, we have these three things, reflection on scripture, serving, and spiritual friendships. So where, what, and the final thing that we can do to help lead people spiritually, to take the next step spiritually, is helping them find their own who. All right, so here's how we're going to kind of, we're, we're getting close to the end. We've got some action items for you here shortly, so hang with me. But a couple things just to keep in mind. When we talk about spiritual maturity and spiritual growth, pastoral care, it is always about who you are able to bring along after you, right? Just as we all need a, a Paul, someone in front of us, a mentor, we also need a Timothy, someone that we're bringing along as well. So when we think about our who, I want to give you a very simple formula, and you may want to jot this down, okay? When you think about, who's my who, said Dr. Seuss, who's my who, the way to identify your who is with this. Number one, or in the first line, you might put something like, my recent or you might put the word last step. So what was your most recent or what was a recent last spiritual step you took that helped you grow? Put that there. And then the next one is you would put someone who hasn't done that step. So the first one is, what is the last step I took or a recent step? The second thing is the name of someone you know who you do not perceive has already taken that next step equals. So my recent step plus someone who has not equals my who. Not your who or you who, but my who, okay? You see how this works. It's corny, but hopefully you'll remember it. So here's the way we're going to go. I want you to take just a moment. I'm going to circle back around, but I want to give you a minute. We're going to give you just about a minute and a half, not long at all. Write down in your formula, think about what was one of the most recent spiritual steps you've taken. Maybe it's practice or something that's happened. And then number two, the name of someone within your circle that may benefit from taking that step. Okay? 90 seconds. Go for it. And if you need to, you are welcome to dip back as far in your life as possible for your most recent step. Well, I was baptized at the tender age of seven. That was 45 years ago. Okay, that's great. Do that one, okay? After you jot that down, if you want to turn to someone and share, that'd be great. Because we're going to do that here in a moment up front, okay? All right. Anyone want to share, uh, don't, don't share your who, but anyone in here uh, willing to share what one of the recent spiritual steps that you have taken, and if you want to dip back far, that's okay. What, what was one that maybe you've taken that was a moment of growth for you? Mission trip. Mission, anyone awesome. else grow spiritually when you go on a mission trip? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great one. What else? Keith, do you have one? Sure, I was just trying to journal more. Yeah, journal. Yeah, absolutely. That's good. What else? Started attending a weekly Bible study. Very good. Okay, so are you hearing some of the variety? By the way, do you notice the different ways that God touches us? One is a physical thing. Another one is more of an intellectual a group Bible study. You've got people involved, so relational. Do you see how there are different things that may touch different people in different ways? So, now that you have yours and you thought about maybe someone else, I want us just to remember one very important point that a disciple, Matthew 28, do you remember that wonderful, great moment where Christ tells us, go and make, what's that word? Of all nations. And then he says, what? Baptizing them? Teaching them to do what? to observe or obey some of the things or all the things, all that I have commanded you. And what is interesting about this is the assumption of Jesus is that the role of a follower is to always bring about another follower. But hear me now, for us to go into all the world means that we make disciples 
who then make disciples. I, my job is not done discipling someone unless they themselves are now discipling others. Sometimes we kind of cut the, the process short, don't we? So here, are you ready for one final Dr. Seuss statement before we get on to the last piece? Here it is, okay? <clears throat> and this is from Evan, so if you love it, it's him. If you hate it, it's him. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> So as you think about your next step, and the reason you want to get other people, help them take the step you've just taken, is because, here we go, you want to do for your who what someone's who did for you. Do for your right. who what someone's who did for you. Okay, now, so as you think about your who, thank you, all three people. Like someone that. helped you take, I was just going to keep talking and move right past that for you. Keep going. So someone helped you take your next step. Some of us, the very first next step someone helped you take was just taking you to church as a child. Mm -hmm. You're here today because of a series of steps you took, but others helped you take. And we now have the privilege of helping others take that next step. So find your who and help your who find the step that they need to take. Make sense? All right, Evan. Yep. All right. So here's what I want you guys to do. Um, on the outside, this outside row here, and then this outside row over here, underneath your chair, sorry, um, there is a, a stack of post-it notes, all right? So if you are on the outside of this row, the outside of that row, I want you to grab that stack of post-it notes, take one, please, and pass it down your row. Does everybody have what they need? Got their notes, good deal. Here's what I would love for you to do. As you get that post-it note, uh, I want to talk just for a second about the idea of prayer, which is probably not a concept we're unfamiliar with, I, I would say. Um, so we were, uh, a couple of us were at lunch today, and uh, Jake said something that I thought was absolutely incredible. And he was giving out a statistic, and, you know, the 73% of statistics are made up on the spot. I don't know if you know I that. I it was 95, but okay. Give or take. So, but well, what he was talking about was this. There have been people who go out and, and they, they look at different missionaries and they look at, at kind of the fruit uh, that, that God is, is helping them to produce. There is a distinct higher yielding of fruit, I guess you could say. Basically, God works more and more powerfully through people who were more devoted to prayer. And I mean, this was, this was a study that was actually done and they went and they had basically these different tiers, right? Of, you know, these missionaries devoted this amount of time to prayer during their day and these missionaries devoted this period of time and so on and so forth. And there was, there was a huge correlation between how effective God was able to use that missionary and how earnest they were in prayer. So here's what I want us to do. I would love for you to write your who on that post-it note really quick, okay? So take just a second. Whoever it is that you wrote down, just do a first name. It's totally fine. Um, if, if you are afraid that someone will recognize just by the first name, you can just put some random description, whatever it is. God knows who it is. Um, and we're going to do two things with these post-it notes. So after you've written it down, uh, I want everybody to grab their post-it, and we'll give about 30 seconds of silence. And I just want you to pray over that piece of paper, just that this person would be willing and open to help, or for you, for you to help them, that they would be willing and open that you could step into their life in some way and help them take a next step. All right, here's what I want you guys to do. Uh, this is going to take a few minutes, and, I, and I'm, that's totally fine. Um, I would love for you to grab your post-it and to come up here and place it on one of these pillars. Just stick it up there. Um, if you want to hand it to somebody so that you don't have to make the trip, that's fine too. If somebody wants to grab all of them for their row, that'd be great. But let's, let's grab all these post-it notes. I want, because I just want to get a, a quick visual of this. So everybody who has a name on their post-it, you can either put it over here on this column or on this column. All right, I would love for you guys to, to take just a minute and, and look at these names up here. See if you find yourself. Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> hey, think, think about just for a second how much potential this represents. 
I mean, we have about 120-ish people in here right now, and about 120 post-it notes up here. Think what God could do with each and every one of these people taking their next step. Think how amazing if we just kept that going and going. And then everybody on here, we taught them to find their who so they could write their who on a post-it note and awkwardly get up in front of everybody and, and post it up here. But I mean, how, how much potential does this represent, guys? This is, this is exciting to me to know that we have all intentionally tried to find that one person that we're going to help just do one thing, just do one thing, and that's where it starts. And so as we kind of close tonight, we're, we're going to do two more things. One will be on the way out. Um, the first thing, everybody has a note card somewhere. What I would love for you to do is I would love for you to take like two minutes and write two things on your note card. Number one, something that you heard over the past two weeks or just tonight that you got excited about and something that you would like to learn more about. Something you got excited about and something you would like to learn more about. And of course, if you, uh, if you need to learn more, please put your name on that so we can find you after tonight versus, oh, someone needs desperately to know more about this. Good luck. Yeah. So please just give us the name for that if uh, you need follow-up. And then you can just leave that in your seat and we'll, and we'll grab it here later. The second thing I want to do, you know, we talked about prayer. We talked about that, that correlation of people being devoted to prayer and, and how God can typically use people more often the more devoted they are to prayer. On your way out tonight, I would love for you to grab a random post-it note and commit for the next 30 days to pray for that person. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter whose post-it note you get. Even if you can't read the handwriting, which is probably the case with some of them, God knows who that person is. But I would love for everyone on their way out tonight just grab a random post-it note, not your own, and, and commit for the next 30 days to pray for that person. We want to be a praying church. That's right. We want to be a church that devotes ourselves to prayer because at the end of the day, we know that we are leading people to a point where they can take a step, but we can't make them take it. God is the only changer of hearts. And so our job is to open up these paths, to remove these obstacles, to help them know where they are, to help them know what to do next, and to help them know who they should be bringing along with them. But we can't make them do any of that. God is the only one that can. And, you know, honestly, it takes a lot of pressure off of us. But we should be devoted in prayer while we do that. So I'm going to pray for us. Seriously, thank you guys for coming these past two weeks. It has been a blast for, I know, the two of us. And it's, it's so exciting to get to share some of the stuff that, that we, get, we get to talk about all this all the time. But um, I love sharing it with you guys. I love being able to, um, to see your reaction and to hear some of your feedback so that we can get better. We want this to be a regular thing. This is not a, a one-off training. This is something that we are committed to. We want to make sure every single person in our church family feels confident enough to be able to lead someone to be more like Jesus. So thank you guys, and let's pray. Father God, we love you, and we thank you uh, again. It is an honor to be able to work for you, to be able to work in your kingdom. And it's a privilege that you trust us with people. God, I, I pray that we can be good stewards of that valuable resource. I pray that we can love them like you do, that we can see them like you do, Father. And God, I pray that each and every one of us would, would find that conviction and feel the weight of responsibility to always have our who on our hearts, God, to, to think about the ways that we can help them know where they are, to think about the ways to help them know what maybe they should do next. 
and then be able to teach them to do the same for somebody else. It, it's exciting, God, and we're so thankful that you trust us enough to be a part of that. Lord, we love you so much, but we know that none of this would be possible without the incredible sacrifice of your son, Jesus, and so it is in his name that we pray this to you. Amen. Guys, thanks. Don't forget a post-it note. Oh, the last blank. It is not prayer. Encourage a culture of... It is prayer. A culture of prayer. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys so, so much.